Well, we've seen that Christmas is historically accurate, but what we want to ask is what difference does it actually make? We're going to talk to Toby Hall, the CEO from Mission Australia, to find out. Hi, Toby. Hey, Carl. How are you going? Nice oh, to well. see you. Hey, Carl. This is Daniel from Mission Bay. Hey, Daniel, how good to you meet going? you. You too. Toby, tell us what does Mission Australia actually do? We work with people who are just down on their luck a little bit, try to understand what's gone wrong with them and help them get them back on their feet. And we call that transformation. If we can help someone get back on track, that's what we're all about. Daniel, what does Mission Beat do? Yeah, Mission Beat has vans that work around the streets of Sydney engaging with people that are sleeping rough and trying to support them and link them in with services that can provide them with, I guess, longer term um, intervention and support to transform their lives. So what's the motivation for Mission Australia? For us, it's going out and doing what we think Jesus would have done if he was here, which was going helping people who are suffering, going helping people get life back on track, and you know, just being there for people, and that's what the message is about to us, and we try and live that out every day. You know, occasionally, some people might find out, want to know more about why we do what we do, and if they ask, we'll tell them. Toby and Daniel took us to visit three clients whom they regularly care for on the streets of Sydney. Uh, I'm Carl. Merry, Carl. Merry Christmas to you. Merry how Christmas are you? to you. You too. I'll put it back again here. Graham, how does Mission Bead help you? Well, look, I've got a raincoat, and it, that comes in very handy. you get wet this morning? No, no, I went undercover. You all right? Oh, good on you. Yeah. What's your favourite yeah. memories of Christmas, Graham? My favourite memories of Christmas is I got a Gladstone bag and a pair of nail boots. <laughs> Me old man. Yeah. That's through the Great Depression. Yeah. Oh, well. But he was our um, next New Guinea Borneo fella. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. But they they come through the Great Depression. Yeah, well, I never had one of those Gladstone bags. You, you got sorted there. I'll tell you what, if I had one today, I'd be happy. Yeah, you would. Yeah. <laughs> right. You were the water. No, you're right, Graham, mate. So, Danny, what do, you, what do you know about Graham? You, you had a lot of contact with yeah, him? Yeah, we do. We, we see Graham almost on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, Graham will be, I'd say, over the moon for today because someone's mm. come along, had a chat, and he just knows that someone cares. For it, so. Daniel, it's so simple, isn't it? it I mean, is. it's, not, it's not like that. It's it is. It's not rocket science. science. Yeah. You know, we may be the only people who stopped and, and talked to Graham today. Yeah. Um, so, if we're able to give that bit, give that, you know, bit of our heart to him for that short period of time, it, it does. It makes a world of difference. Toby, what would be a difference if all the Christian organisations pulled out of the work that they do? Nearly 80% of the work which is done by organisations like ours are done by Christian organisations. So, you know, if they all pulled out one day, we'd be in big trouble in Australia. Terry, great to meet you, mate. Hello. Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, and have you been, you been in Sydney and on the street very long yourself? I've been on the streets for a long time. What about uh, Christmas? That must be a bit of a harder time for you, like handling Christmas and that, that sort of yeah, period of Yeah, all the parties going on and, you know, like, if I want to get off the grog and all that sort of stuff, you know. It's pretty tough for me because, yeah, it is pretty tough out there, you know. Terry's kind of the where the rubber hits the road for you, doesn't yep. it, really? No, that's the one, and I, it's a good change to Terry. He said the guys have been looking after him really well, and he's like, and it, but it's yeah. tough. He's been homeless for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's down on the list to get housing, but can't get a house, and so it's it is hard. You know, I'm just sort of starting. Out, I want to start fresh. You yeah. know, sort of. You yeah. know, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get housing myself, but you know, I'll take anything, anywhere. Yeah. You know, if I've got a place, I'll get off the road. Yeah. The big thing is with a lot of people that are homeless and like Terry's saying, he just wants a roof over his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's such a simple thing. And like Terry's just said, that like mm -hmm. if he had a place, then he could slow down his drinking. And we're seeing yeah, that so working. Yeah. 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 Terry, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, and a, have right. a fabulous Christmas. Hey, you too. So hey. Down, walk out the lane. We'll keep on working with a guy like Terry through thick and thin in the hope that one day, you know, he'll get off the streets, he'll get his house and he'll get life sorted out again. And I think even in our case, the Christian thing to do actually is, even if you don't get the change, is to actually come and stand alongside people and just be with them and show them some love and attention. And that, that makes a big difference to them and helps them a lot. Toby, what does the, uh, the centre here do? We look after a small group of men here, about 32 men, and help them get out of homelessness. But then we've got a whole range of services from medical services, dental services, and support services that we run out of the centre and probably about uh, a thousand people a year are coming in and out all the time accessing service just to get things sorted out and Alan's using the computers here and loads of people come down just use the computers as part of normal life.
Alan, you, you're living in Redfern now, but you actually were living on the trains for a while. Yeah, I lived on the trains oh, for about a series of about six months. Wow, how did you end up there? Why did you end up doing that? It was, uh, oh, I looked, my state of mind, it was in turmoil at the time. Yeah. And I was unsettled about yeah. where I was, what I, what, what I was doing. And what what helped you out of that? Uh, talking to people here, like some days I just feel, I don't know, I, I just feel down and out. And yet, I mean, by coming here, this is a nice place here. And you just sit in on the lounges there and you look around with the paintings and stuff and air conditioning and uh, you start to come alive and you start to feel like a million dollars. Like, it's life Christmas. is worth living. And it's all thanks to Mission Australia. Uh, we want to wish you all the best for Christmas and we hope yeah. it's a good one for you. So well, thank you very much. I think one of the things we see is people do lose hope and hope's a really important thing to all of us. And I think the key thing is having people alongside you just caring. And you know, at the heart of it, Australians go and look after people, they care about people, and I think that's been the Christian heritage and it's still a big part of the Australian ethos today. Thanks, Daniel. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thanks, Thanks Toby. Carl. Good on you. Thank you. Well, that's the work of Mission Australia. But what difference does Christmas make to the individual?